George, is there purpose in the universe? There's clearly and manifestly purpose in the universe. You've asked me that question because you want an answer. <laughs> you, your purpose, the purpose that is in the universe and manifested in what you have done. And I find it ironic when people write papers saying there's no purpose in the universe and then publish them because they want other people to read them, which shows by that very action there is purpose in the universe. What the question is, is that purpose founded in and emergent from the nature of the universe or does in some sense emerge out of a purposeless underlying physical reality and to me that latter doesn't make sense to me it makes sense we have purpose because that purpose reflects the nature of underlying reality what data can support that conclusion the data of everyday life in fact to me to a considerable extent i came to my position on the nature of things through the times when I was in South Africa and we were heavily involved in the attempt to cre rectify what was clearly an unjust and wrong situation. And there was no doubt in the minds of the people I was working with, involved with, that what was happening was morally wrong. Now, it wasn't a statement that in some cultures it would have been right and in others it wouldn't have been. It wasn't a state of that evolutionary psychology mm -hmm. said something. It was a statement, this is wrong. And I believe if you want to say that, if you want to have the capacity to say something is evil or something is wrong, then you have to believe that there is a moral reality out there independent of humanity which exists. It did exist, it will exist, that it exists in other parts of the universe in exactly the same way. In other words, it is built into the nature of existence. Existence. Does that mean that you are viewing your cosmology from a more fundamental sense of an absolute morality? By cosmology here, we're using cosmology in the big sense yes. of the nature of existence yes. overall, not just physical cosmology. Yes, 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 yes. yes. absolutely. But interpreting then, or n not, not affecting your science in any yeah. way, but, but viewing an interpretation of that science in terms of the philosophical underpinnings based upon not a derivation from that science alone, no. but rather seeing your the fundamental sense of morality and then being able to, to view that science I, in a new light. That is correct. I think the data for the universe, part of the data is scientific universe, repeatable, uni sorry, part of the data is scientific data, repeatable and reliably obtainable. Part of it is ex our own experience, our experience of ethics, aesthetics, our experience of meaning in our own life. That is not repeatable data. Nevertheless, it is very, very real data about the nature of existence. And that philosophical, indeed, perhaps theistic view does that in any way enable you to see more into the cosmological data? The cosmological data is about the big nature of the universe. Where they link is this question of why the universe allows life to exist. And we do know, thinking as a cosmologist, that many, many possible conceivable universes would not allow life to exist. So they do link in that that this morality would not come into practice, it would not be realized unless there were beings there who existed in a way able to behave in a moral manner. So they are linked in the sense that if there is an underlying purpose to the universe which is then going to be manifested in people like ourselves, it has to be a universe which allows beings to exist to have consciousness and some kind of free will. What do you say to your colleagues, uh, whom you respect and uh, who respect you very much, who say that when they look into the laws of physics and the data of cosmology, that they cannot find purpose, uh, it is pointless, and indeed that human beings are a, a fragmentary accident? So I think by their actions of writing these papers and wanting to communicate with other people about them, they are demonstrating there is meaning in the universe. The question that arises is, has that meaning arisen in humanity out of a meaningless underpinning, or does the meaning in our lives reflect the nature of an underpinning? And I think only the second makes sense. But what they would say is that the data that you're using about um, the human experiences, rich as it is, 
is such a infinitesimal part of the cosmos on our little Earth, on this little <laughs> outskirts of a galaxy and hundreds of billions of galaxies, hundreds of billions of stars, innumerable, that the whatever is happening in the human experience is completely irrelevant in the great scheme of the enormity of the universe. Well, um it's, it's a fallacy that importance is related to size. The examples of microbes shows that quite clearly. <laughs> uh, one point which I think one should make here, if the universe is such as to allow life on our Earth, it is almost inevitable that it isn't only life on our Earth. There will be life spread throughout the universe, and so it won't be just on this little planet, which is kind of what Carl Sagan implied, and I think your question implied. There will be this meaningful people acting in ethical ways, seeing things aesthetically on millions and millions of planets throughout the universe, not just on this particular one. And if it turns out that's not the case? Um, if it turns out that's not the case, we will go be going back to a pre-Copernican view of the universe, because in some sense our planet will be different from everywhere else yeah. in the universe. Uh, that's virtually the same as saying we are the center of the universe in some sense. It would be a highly unlikely situation. Is it life that is critical or is it in fact consciousness, the self-awareness uh, that we have? It is consciousness, yes. So, um, yeah, I, I was thinking of consciousness. Yeah. So the requirement of consciousness suddenly takes on very great significance, what we say, ontological significance yes. in terms of the being of things. That is correct. Because that existence would affect our interpretation of yeah. all there is. That is correct. Our knowledge of consciousness and free will shows the existence of a kind of quality which is completely different from inanimate matter. That is a fundamental feature of the universe, the fact that such existence can be. And therefore, that affects your entire worldview, if it you will. It affects my metaphysical view about the nature of the universe, precisely.